Okay. How about now? Aloha. Todd, Jay Porter, Shacklin, can you guys hear me? The people that's in a group. It looks like it, it. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Good stuff. It looks like they gave me the bad camera. I don't know why, but my camera looks all. It gave me the camera off my computer, not the actual camera on my. Hold on. Doesn't allow me to change it. Sorry. So um, at the very end, we're going to have time for questions and answers. Um, I should run. This should run about an hour presentation. Then you guys feel free to ask whatever questions you have at the very end. Also, for those people who stick around, I do have a free gift at the very end. So um, Jay Porter, I know that name. Oh, Jay, I think I know. I know who you are. You, you've always been a go-getter. You're the guy that was out doing stuff. Let me grab my notepad real quick for you guys. Jay, I got it right? Um, by the way, if you were here last week, it's the same presentation. So if you are here last week, no need to stick through it. All right. Um, it is long and it's going to carry over. By the way, if you've got to run for whatever reason, there will be a replay of this webinar. So it's OK if you got to run. No hard feelings. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. OK. Yeah, Jay. So you're the same Jay Porter, right? That was on that's on YouTube. Hit me up. I'm assuming. Yeah. All right, guys, listen, let me go ahead and jump in. Like I said, there will be a replay if you miss it or you've got to go for any reason. And there's a Q&A session at the very end. Um, it should be about an hour long. All right. So let me just jump into it so we can get going. Do, 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 do. I'm going to turn my webcam off so we can jump into this. All right. Today, hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Eric Coffey. I'm sure most of you guys know me. Um, today, I'm going to show you how to create a six-figure income without running a full-time business. This webinar today is how to build a million-dollar business selling to the government. I'm guessing probably a lot of you, this is not your first webinar. You, maybe you've tried your hands at government contracting before, um, and maybe you've failed and it didn't work out for you. But that's okay because, you know, there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of fake gurus, people pretending to be uh, experienced in this arena and never having actually won a contract. And so that's probably why you're here today. So, you know, if you've tried it before, no worries. Um, you just need the right person to show you how to do it. Some of you out there may be thinking, um, you know, that you're not good enough for winning federal contracts. I want to put those fears to rest. You can do this. You just need the right person to explain it to you. And that's kind of what we're going to hope that we accomplish today by finishing up the webinar. And if you've been thinking to yourself that the big corporations sell you, you need a lot of capital, you need a college degree in order to be successful. I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. The people who are making all the money are, they want to keep this whole thing under wraps, as you can imagine, for good reasons. Um, they're trying to keep us small guys out of it. And in fact, if you're thinking um, they want you to fail, you're probably right. Because, you know, how do they benefit by helping you succeed? Um, they would love to offer you low wage paying jobs. The difference is here at Score Contracts, we actually care about your success. And you know what, guys, I want to see you living the life of your dreams. Um, I'm living the life of my dreams. And so I want to help you do the same thing. So that's what we're here for. Um, you've probably got a dream to change the world or at least the world around you, make an impact, make a difference. And so I'm hoping that this webinar today will help show you kind of the way that I've taken, the approach that I've taken and give you some ideas for yourself and for your future. Um, there's two types of people that I want to help today. Um, for those people who are beginning and have a product or service, you know, we're going to talk about how to win a seven figure contract using federal uh, arena. And for those of you who do not have a product or service, um, if you watch any of my stuff on YouTube, we talk about consulting and I want to show you how to make a six figure consulting income, helping companies win federal contracts. And so my goal from this webinar today, um, because there are so many self-proclaimed gurus out there, free resource agencies and well-meaning people, 
Um, you know, my goal is to show you that, listen, the only way to start winning fellow contracts consistently is to use a structured curriculum. Um, and the only structured curriculum on the market being taught by an active government contractor is GovCon Giants. And so those are my two goals today. And with that, you know, let me tell you a little bit about myself, my background um, right there on the left hand side. That was me um, during my college years around 2001. And uh, I was with at the time that was Governor Bush, um, you know, Jeb Bush. He was the governor of Florida. And uh, we started a technology company where um, we were actually creating software for health and fitness centers. Um, and so I started this technology company that was running off of like wireless PDA devices. And um, so it worked out well. The only issue we had was after our second round of funding, um, my third partner on the right, Hamed, he um, said that if we didn't get any more investor funding that, and he had to go back to his home country, that he would um, do some bad things. And so, you know, he put some fear into my eyes and the eyes of friends of mine. And so I decided to part ways because I didn't want um, there to be any, you know, bad blood between us. And so I decided to leave that and I jumped into the real estate market. I did that. I jumped into real estate. I did that for about five or six years. I was a top um, top 1% realtor in the state of Florida, made a lot of money. But as you know, um, like kind of like right now, the uh, real estate market around 2007, um, 2008 was the crash and everything kind of went up in the air. And so, you know, as a realtor, um, you know, everything kind of shut down and stopped for me. And really at that point in my career, I didn't have a whole lot of alternatives. Um, I had taken my general contractor's uh, exam and uh, passed the test, but without any uh, properties to build or any construction to do, I couldn't really do anything with my license. So during the same time frame, I was introduced to a gentleman here on the bottom left hand corner, Mr. Paul Morrow, and he ran an air conditioning company. And um, like I said, I was a realtor. He told me about the power of government contracts. And so probably like a lot of you guys out there today, um, you've probably heard about all of the billions of dollars of contracts, uh, small business contracts, set aside contracts, veteran contracts, A to A and all this kind of stuff. And so he told me, he introduced me to the world of federal contracting. And so that was my first um, introduction into the world of federal contracting. Like I said, I was a realtor. He was an AC technician. He was actually in his truck fixing air conditions when I met him. And so we decided to get together and start bidding on federal projects. Um, and so literally we started going after projects and um, I was charged with business development. So I was my responsibility to go out there, find the projects and then put the bid together and then he would get them done. And so we did that <clears throat> and we made a good team for a while. And so we took this, uh, me, myself as a realtor with no construction background experience and him as an AC mechanic um, with, you know, only having done uh, air conditioning in the past. And we started doing federal projects. And so this was some of the projects that we did at the Air Force Base. Uh, we worked in a runway. We wrote in a flight line. We did worked at commander's offices. And so, you know, we actually um, did that for a while. And it's funny, we, we had a successful team until, um, you know, we did that for about three years. And then at that point, we um, decided to part ways because he had his family in a business. And it was hard for me to work with his family because, you know, they weren't putting in the work, and, but they were wanting to receive the benefits. So we kind of part ways um, and we stopped working together. Now, I know what you're thinking. Probably you're saying to yourself that, well, listen, Eric, I don't know anything about construction. So I wanted to show you how this not only worked for me, but it worked for one of my students. Um, meet Pierce Robinson. Uh, Pierce Robinson, uh, he first I was first introduced to them in November of 2017. He sent me this email. He had just recently purchased my book, The Billion Dollar Playbook. And so... <clears throat> He was saying while reading across, he came across GSA government IT initiatives. Um, and then he told me he had a startup company that he was working with to build a solution for GSA. He was a minority veteran. Um, and he was going to my free course. And then he was talking about doing the 8A program. And then below, 
Um, he said he was find, interested in finding out about more about technologies. He was talking about some companies in, in Omaha. So that was in November of 2017. Um, and like I said, he had just started watching videos, took, bought the book, and was interested. Um, October of 2018, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, Pierce was actually in the military. So he was a military guy, and so he really couldn't actually pursue his um, his, his government contracting dream until he left the military. So, so once he left the military, um, about a year later, just under a year, maybe six months later, he took the leap, bought the course, um, and then we had our first strategy session. And so uh, you'll see there in the comments, um, he bought in October, December, we talked, touched bases, and he said that was the feedback. Eric provided recommendations, ideas, and a great deal of insight on the next steps I need to ensure I'm successful. Because of your conversation today and discussion, I had one of my clients meeting, and he was offered his own division within their company. Do the work, follow instructions. You can't fail. And so literally, uh, when Pierce left the military, um, he actually helped one of the companies that was looking to do um, propose a, a, a IT solution to the government. He helped them through the, the information that he had learned in the course. He helped do some research for them. They offered him a position at the company, and you can read it here, um, in excess of six figures plus 8% of the company. So it says here, thanks for taking the time out of your day to talk to me earlier. Uh, the opioid site, we went to the SBR event and was talking to another client who does education and training. They offered me a percent of their company and 8% of gross off of any contract. They asked me if, if I wanted to start my own government branch, would I run it? I don't know how it's going to work because of uh, what I'm doing. Honestly, I want to do both. Long term, they want me on board as a C-level executive. Anyway, I just want to give you a rundown and say thanks again without the knowledge you shared. None of this would be possible. Pierce Robinson, that's in December 2018. So from November 2017 um, to December 2018, his life did an entire 180. Um, and so, you know, kind of, you know, that's what we're going to talk about today. So some of the secrets I like to share with you guys. Um, throughout this webinar is secret number one, sales hacking, how to scale any business using federal contracts. Secret number two, uh, GovCon, what we call GovCon consultant cloning, how to clone my consultant system to find clients with products, services, certifications, money, and teams ready to do business with you. And secret number three, my number one government hack, how to go direct awards without ever writing a proposal using FedBizOps, FedBit, GovThis, GovThat, or any other bid site. So we're going to jump into... Secret number one, how to scale any business using federal contracts. And it's what we call sales hacking. Um, so with that, let me take you to another story. This is me. Um, I was I was working at Miami-Dade County. So around 20, 2013, 2014, um, my business had taken off. I was doing, uh, I started working in the private sector. And I had gotten away from my government contracting roots, start working in the private sector. And, uh, you know, the reason one of the reasons why I pushed the government contracting side is because the private sector is brutal. I mean, they're really brutal. And so they beat me up and uh, basically they forced me to take a job. Um, I still have my company open. I still had a couple of employees, but I had to take a job to pay my day to day bills. So I was working. I took a job, a temporary position at Miami-Dade County, and I was managing um, their construction projects for uh, CAA, which is Community Action uh, Division. So it's uh, it called, actually called CASH, a Community Action Health Human Services Division. So I was their construction manager, and that's my team at the top. That's Jamika Martin behind me. She'll probably kill me if she knew that, that picture was up on the screen. And so, um, but the entire time I was working there, I knew it was just a temporary placeholder for me until I was able to get my next uh, government contract. And so, um, while at Miami-Dade County, I was making about uh, $80,000 a year. But at the same time, I was telling everyone, like, listen, I'm only here for a temporary time. I was still on FBO. I was still looking at projects. I was still looking at jobs to bid. Um, I was still reaching out to people in my network. And so I was still, I knew that um, if I get back to the federal marketplace, that I could pull myself up by my bootstraps and get back on my feet. And it was the private sector that had, that had taken me out. And so while working at Miami-Dade County, I got a phone call from a gentleman um, here in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, Andy Wood is his name. And uh, when I was uh, actively working as a government contractor, Andy, I had helped him on a couple projects. 
And so um, he told me that he, when he got a chance, he'd pay me back. And so he did. He called me up with this project on the right-hand side. It was in the design phase. And at the time, like I said, I was a full-time employee with Miami-Dade County. And he called me up and said, hey, Eric, I've got a project for you. I never forgot what you did for me. And uh, we want to put it together to bid. And so I was literally uh, going into the conference room and the bathroom, taking phone calls. Um, negotiating the deal, putting together all the paperwork, and uh, while working full time at Miami Dade County. And so at the end of the day, we ended up negotiating um, this project. It turned out just to be under half a million dollars. And again, it was negotiated. I didn't have to bid it, we just priced it. And so that was the first project that pulled me from the county. I was able to walk away, quit Miami Dade County, and I jumped right into the federal marketplace again. Um, and so that was around 2014. And so with this project, I was back on my feet. Now, this project happened to be a flight simulator building over in Wichita, Kansas. It's the flight simulator for the refueling jets that refuel Air Force One in the midair. And so they're coming out with new jets and they were designing, they needed a new simulator building for the simulator that was going to be trained to pilots how to fly it. And so um, with Andy, we negotiated this project. It was about a half a million dollars. After we did some engineering work, I got my first check in like two to three months. And it was enough money for me to walk away from my accounting position. Shortly after that, Andy's company had picked up another project over at uh, in Panama City at Eglin Air Force Base to redo the entire hospital. And so they brought me onto that project. Um, they invited me to fly out there to take a look at it. Again, another negotiated job. And so they invited me out. I flew out there, met with them. And that one turned out to be, um, I originally thought it was going to be like one or two million. It turned out to be just under $5 million, like $4.8, $4.9 million. So um, this turned out to be a substantial project. And uh, so right away, I mean, I was basically, I was thrust back into the federal marketplace. And so I know what you're probably thinking that, hey, listen, Eric, of course it's you. You're the guy on YouTube, right? But I wasn't always the guy on YouTube. And uh, the cool thing is it just didn't work for me. It's worked for all kinds of people. Shannon Page Overland, she uh, won her first contract, a 10-month deal. She was a nurse that turned out to start selling medical supplies. Um, Marie Mack was a contractor that had equipment sales, and she turned out to start a women-owned business and landed her first contract for over $3 million doing construction after getting with a partner. Um, so it's worked for other people as well, not just myself. Um, so just a couple of false beliefs that people typically come at me with. They say, well, Eric, everyone says it's hard to get a contract. And so, yeah, I like to tell you, yes, it is hard to get a contract. Um, but that's only because people don't have a structured system. They don't have a, a formal uh, system in place to go after getting these contracts. If you were given a system to follow that you knew step by step what direction you should be going, then um, it would be much easier, much simpler to actually do this. So a lot of times people think that, oh, I can go out there and just bid projects, um, but you'll find out really quickly how difficult that can be. Another thing that people always say is, well, Eric, I heard the system's rigged. And so it's, it's funny because if the system was rigged, how is it possible that, you know, I started off from a realtor to getting government contracts, my buddy, an AC contract to get contracts, and then even, you know, fast forward, you know, 10 years, eight years later, when I was down on my luck and I had to work a job in Miami-Dade County, I plunged back into the market again and getting contracts. So again, you know, um, anytime that I've been in financial trouble, government contracts basically pull me out of it. Another false belief that people say all the time is, well, my friend said she can get me contracts once I'm certified. And I'm here to tell you that, you know, winning contracts is more than just being handed a contract. Um, there's a lot of paperwork that goes along with it. There's managing the contract, performing the contract, executing the contract. So again, there's a lot more to actually getting the contract. In fact, um, some of the first students that I've met on YouTube came to me and they actually had won contracts from like FedBid, but they had no way of actually financing them. So they won the contract, right? They were given a contract, but they didn't have any financing in place. So ultimately, they couldn't perform because they couldn't buy the product to sell it, resell it to the government. Um, another common uh, misstep that people tell me is, well, Eric, I don't have two years of business experience, and so I'm not eligible. Not eligible for what? I mean, you can literally set up a company 
and start going after government contracts today, tomorrow. There's no two year rule that you have to be a certified or licensed in order to bid government contracts. Now, for some of the specific certifications, they want you to be in business for two years, but to actually participate in the government marketplace, um, you don't have to actually have been in business for two years. That's not a requirement. Another thing that people say often is, well, Eric, I've got bad credit. Well, listen, credit has nothing to do with anything. To tell you the truth, if anybody's watched any of my videos on credit or supply credit, you'll know, listen, I've never had a credit score higher than like 670. I've never had a 700 credit score in my entire life. But what I've been able to do is we've been able to get what's called supplier credit. And so supplier credit is different from actual your regular personal credit because you only order supplies when you need them for a specific project. So they're a lot more lenient on helping you to establish supplier credit than they would with your actual real credit or getting a credit card. Uh, well, Eric, I'm waiting on some funds to get before I start. Listen, like I told you before, there's multiple ways that you can jump in this industry. One is, yes, you could be a prime contractor. And in that case, as a prime contractor, then I would suggest you go out and get supplier credit. But the alternative way is to work as a consultant. And as a consultant, you're going to be using someone else's credit, someone else's cash. So you don't have to worry about having any type of funds to get started. Another common uh, mis or mis common uh, thing that people say is, well, they said I need a business plan. Um, there's no purpose of having a business plan because what you need is a plan on what activities you're going to be doing each day, how you're going to be doing it. And like I said, what you need more than a business plan is an actual system to follow. And what better way than have a system from someone who's proven this time and time again. So you don't need a business plan. You need a business system that you can follow a structured format in which you know what activities you should be doing each and every day, each and every weekend and week out. Um, well, Eric, uh, I'm waiting on my hub zone or my veteran on my woman on my GSA or my 8A or my blah, 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 blah. You know, it's very difficult to explain this because a lot of people are given misinformation. All the certifications are great. And don't get me wrong. I love certifications, but certifications do not guarantee contracts. So the first thing I tell everybody is learn how to start winning contracts. Learn how to start developing relationships with government officials. Learn that first while in the process of getting your certifications. The certifications will definitely help, but at the same time, having a certification without understanding how to uh, talk to the government, what to say, who to see, how to go about doing that does you no good. Certifications are only a license. It's like a fishing license. You get the license to be able to fish in this pool, but they don't tell you how to catch fish. Another thing I hear is that uh, you're waiting to get office space. Listen, when I was working with uh, the AC guy, Paul Morrow, we worked out of his house. In fact, we ran his whole business and millions of dollars of contracts right out of his house because his house personally was closer to the military base. And so um, if you can get, I'm going to tell you this, if your state, wherever you live at, if your state will give you uh, a license to do business out of your house, then the federal government honors and respects that license. Um, so Eric, don't I need connection, connection to Washington? So the funny thing is, I actually don't know anybody in Washington. I never have. I never, I, you know, I've only think I've only been in Washington like twice in my entire life. And one was just a layover going to another destination. So the fact that you need to know somebody in Washington is, uh, is irrelevant because Really, the people that are making decisions are going to be at the contract level. Um, a lot of times, the things that go up to Washington are higher level contracts, higher level things that exceed like ten million dollars. And most of us are going to be dealing with contracts at that level. So there's no purpose or reason or rationale for needing to talk to someone up in Washington. Um, well, my P Tech said I need a team. Again, depending upon the approach, depending upon where you're at, and and again. If you have a product or service or if you want to go consulting route, you know, if you're going to consulting route, you don't need a team. You're going to be bringing on a team. If you have a product or service, what you need is uh, vendors, suppliers, you need um, and people that can help provide the products and services that you want to offer the government so that you can have actual vendor credit or supplier credit. Um, so with that said, you know, that was secret number one, how to scale your business using federal contracts. Um, so now that I've shown you how you can enter this market and become a consultant, 
without if you already have teams, money, services, um, let's go on. And I want to talk to you about secret number two, what I call GovCon consultant cloning, how to clone a consultant system to find clients for products, services, certifications, team, monies, ready to do business with you. All right. So let's, this brings me to this gentleman here. Um, this is Curtis Morrow. So if you remember the AC guy's picture, this is his brother. So after I, after I worked for about three years with AC guy and uh, we had problems, conflict with his uh, family, I started working with Curtis Morrow. And so he was actually my first ever consultant client. Um, he was a painter. He did have 8A certification, um, but like most people, 8A certification, he had no idea how to use it. And so the funny, the reason why I have a picture of a fence is because when I first met him, he was working on a fence project. And I asked him, I said, what were you doing? He said, well, the government says I have to do 20% of the work. So he was literally out there putting the fence up with the guys because he thought he had to physically go and do 20% of the work. <laughs> and so it's funny, because, to me, it's hilarious because a lot of times people take things literally and that's not what the government meant. They didn't mean that you, the owner, had to get out there next and put up the fence. It just meant that you had to have staff members or a percent of the project had to be done with your team. That also includes doing some of the management, the oversight, the paperwork and things like that. But again, he wasn't, he didn't know he was clueless. And uh, so that's kind of how he got started. So uh, we start working together and um, he is where we really learn about simplified acquisition. So the, all those projects that fall under the $150,000, under the $250,000 threshold, we really took advantage of that. And so him and I, um, we start like doing a lot of simplified acquisition. We start doing 8A set aside, 8A sole source type projects. This was, uh, we worked at this particular uh, housing facility. We worked at the um, flight line. Um, that was the um, the control tower. So we changed all the panels of control tower. We did all the mold remediation of control tower. Um, and so we really, our partnership worked out really good. And uh, literally, probably in about three years of working with him, he had pulled in probably about $700,000 in profit. Um, those are some hangars that we built on the flight line. Um, again, like I told you, we worked at the Coast Guard base. And so we just kept going from project to project to project to project, contract after contract. Um, and it was a great relationship. Um, but what happened was, you know, he was comfortable. And uh, we were doing, like I said, we were doing probably about two, two and a half, three million dollars a year. And he didn't really want to do more than that. He didn't want to take a chance. He didn't want to go into any larger projects. He didn't want to bring on staff. And so, you know, I kind of set my sales further um, from that. And then that's how I launched my own company and went out on my own um, and start my own business. But during the time, um, it was a great relationship because, again, I was helping land the contracts. He was helping get the work done. And then I would take a percent of the contracts and I was getting 25% of everything that we did. And eventually that 25% shifted up to more like a 50% of the sales. And so it was good, but it became a lot of work. And when we, when we didn't want to go after any of the larger projects, um, I kind of got turned off from that. So the cool thing is that, um, picking up a consultant client didn't just work for me. Here's some other people in the group, Hector, who found, um, consultant clients as well. Hector, he found a, uh, he does fuel and he provides fuel to the government. And so he was able to pick up a bulk fuel distributor that's willing to be his mentor. And so they put together the mentor project documents for the SBA. Um, now he's looking at landing some of the 70% of the contracts that are not on FBO. Michael Van Cure, him and I did a strategy session. And um, as you see in the bottom email, he said the same thing. Eric, uh, I watched a few of your videos. Light bulb hit me. I have this client I've been working with doing construction in Broward. Uh, we have been working on a strategy to get me into projects as I can handle all this IT work. And then he thought to himself, here's a guy that builds entire buildings and has a team of bonding, everything like that. Um, and so he approached him and uh, basically what he said at the top was he secured the client as a consultant client. Same thing with Tony. Um, and so, again, like I said, this um, it's not just happened to me. It's happened to many other people um, in the group. And so, uh, again, like I said, some of the, the people are out there probably thinking, well, don't I need to know someone in business? You know. We uh, talk about in the course, right? Um, you, everyone's got a sphere of influence. A lot of times you're probably not talking to people about this GovCon thing and what you're learning, what you're doing. Um, 
if you start talking to people, you know, one of the things I like to say is if you're watching my videos, you're watching my YouTube, you're here in this webinar, you probably have, uh, you probably know more than 90% of all the people out there. So once you start talking to people and letting them know what your plans are, what your intentions are, what you're doing, you'd be surprised how many business owners will actually approach you and want to solicit you for services. Well, Eric, don't I know uh, everything about government contracting first? Absolutely not. You don't need to know everything about government contracting because why? Um, first of all, I don't know everything about government contracting, but what I do know is about the specific area in which I work. So again, like I said, by just watching my videos and learning from my lessons, your knowledge is so much more superior than the majority of people. Even a lot of the contracting officials, uh, they subscribe to me and they watch my channel as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if we've got some contracting officers or officials on this webinar today with you. So again, you probably, um, it, you know, if you're new, then obviously, you know, you maybe you, you're at 50%. But if you just on the content that I've already put out, I can tell you right now, you're going to be further advanced than the majority of people that you're going to run across. Um, well, do I need any money to represent my client? Like I said, no. The uh, What we teach you is to go after clients who've got money, who have teams, who have resources. And all that the thing the difference is we want to take them from the private sector and bring them over to the government marketplace. And so the company that you're going to work with is going to already have all the things that you need. And then you're going to be like kind of like a matchmaker on helping connect them with the government agencies and then being paid to do so. Um, well, don't I need to know about the industry of the client that I'm working with? And so, you know, that's actually a very good point. And the answer to that is absolutely not. And I'm going to tell you why. When you're talking to the government liaison, right, that person has probably got a bachelor's degree, criminal justice degree. They're not actually the techie person that you believe they are. Um, it's only when you actually go to do a physical meeting with the government that you're going to run into the technology type people or the people that are the techies that know about that specific industry. But at that point, you're going to bring your client along with you and they're going to be able to answer any and all those questions. But initially, when you start soliciting the government officials, you know, the people that you're going to be talking to are going to have no more knowledge. Uh, they're just buyers. So they're not going to have any more knowledge um, than you have of that particular product or service. Um, well, Eric, but I can't do this with a full time job. So the truth is, actually, um, I have a consultant client that I work with right now. And my consultant client, um, you know, their company does about uh, 19 million a year. And literally after I uh, got them all set up and they gave me all the information, um, I'm able to spend about 10, 12 hours a week on that client. So again, um, if so, if I had a full time job, let's say I was working 40 hours a week, it would basically be another 10 or 12 hours, an additional workload for me to take on that client. So now that I've shown you how to enter this marketplace, how to clone my consultant system, find clients with products, services, certifications and money, I want to Take you on to secret number three, how to get direct awards without writing proposals or using FedBizOps, FedBid this or other type of bidding sites. Um, remember just a moment ago, we were talking about that client. This is, um, let me tell you kind of like the background or the backstory of this person. So um, last year around March, I got a phone call from somebody, a random guy on Clarity. And so he called me up and he said uh, that, hey, listen, I watched some of your videos. I'm very interested in working with you. And uh, he says, I would rather pay you to do it. I don't feel like watching any videos and actually trying to do it myself. He's got more money than time. And so we ended up meeting out of the country. We had coffee together. And uh, basically, I told him, listen, you know, if you want me to help you, you've got to give me an assigned staff person to work with. Um, I'll, they'll be, they'll do all the actual physical work and I'll just guide them and tell them what they should be doing, um, and monitoring that person They we agree. Um, and so in June of 2018, about three months later, we created their capability statement. Um, two months after that, they had completed all the market research that I asked them to do. Um, and then on July 11th, I started making phone calls, reaching out to government agencies. And within a week, I had two meetings already set up with small business specialists. Um, nine days later, I confirmed my third meeting. And actually, um, that person that I spoke to uh, on the phone, literally uh, based on the capability statement that we sent them, 
this contracting official asked me if they had a project on FBO that no one bid and if I would be willing to bid the project. And so they extended the project for me at FBO. And so we bid that project. August the 1st, we bid that one. Um, and then another job came out um, that fit our criteria. We bid that second project. And then uh, we met with the Office of Booze. And September the 6th, we awarded the first project that we bid, which was the one that was extended on FBO. Um, the, the September 24th, we were our second project. And then we got a phone call from one of the meetings for a sole source um, five-year uh, asbestos treatment contract. And so we were our, our third project on October the 17th. So literally um, from June to uh, the mid-October, we picked up $5 million in projects. Um, two of them were sole source to us. Um, about two and a half million of it was sole source. So, um, and so literally we were able to put $5 million on the table, um, six months after meeting me. So of course they were ecstatic. Um, but again, like I tell you, you know, this is not just happening to me. Um, this is Justin Adams. Justin Adams is one of the students of my pilot program. I have two, uh, pilot programs, one and two that I work with students one on one who have consulted clients, and then we do weekly uh, call-ins, and I go over issues that they've got. Justin Adams is one of my students, and um, so he actually was working with an IT company, and uh, he posted this in the Facebook group in January, saying, hey, I, re I received an RFQ for some software. The CEO sent over a spreadsheet with pricing from the company website. I got a quote from the software company, eight bucks per unit. Any price suggestions would it additional market apply? And so the cool thing is most people didn't realize that Justin Adams, uh, when he, what he wrote, he didn't state, but he said this contracting officer sent over a spreadsheet with pricing. I said, Justin Adams, I don't think the group knows that this was for a sole source. It was not publicized on any website. And then he's like, it's definitely, it took a few months since I met the individual agency, but making it known, I was looking for a sole source opportunity, no competition and staying persistent. The agency reached out and asked for a quote. Um, so if I can do it, anyone can. And so, you know, that was a testament of the efforts that he put in was that, hey, he literally, you know, made a relationship and then asked him for a sole source. And then a few months later, they sent him out a sole source award. So, again, I, I already know we got the, the naysayers out there and they're saying all kind of crazy stuff. I heard this illegal. Listen, everything that we do follows the guidelines of the FAR, um, which is the Bible of federal contracting. Um, it's perfectly legal, perfectly acceptable, um, simplified acquisition, sole source for uh, set aside. All this stuff is well within the confines of the law to do. In fact, the government's looking at doing more of it each year. They they spend more money on simplified acquisition. Um, and we'll talk about that at the end of the webinar. So this is something that is commonly practiced, commonly used. Um, Eric, I heard that every job you need past performance. That's not true. Um, as you move up on some of the larger projects, they're going to ask for past performance on some of the uh, micro purchases. They're not going to ask for past performance because they're so small. Um, but again, if you are working um, in a particular field, selling a product or service, I would hope that you've got past performance. And if you don't, then you should probably look at the consulting route. Um, Eric, I've never worked in the film market before. That's OK. A lot of times, if you look at some of the RFPs, RFQs that come down the pipe, you know, the government doesn't tell. It says that that any type of experience uh, is qualified or eligible. They don't expect everyone to have worked in the federal arena before. So that's perfectly acceptable. Um, um, Eric, what if I can't meet the subcontracting goals because my firm is a new company? Listen, there's all types of ways to meet your subcontracting goals. In fact, uh, one of my most recent videos that I published on YouTube talks about ways in which you can put together teams of small businesses that are like size to help you qualify for meeting your goals. So basically all you got to do is put together a team with someone else and uh, that will help you meet your goal. Eric, but what if I win the product? How will I pay for it? So, you know, again, that's kind of what we talk about is how do you build your supplier credit? How do you set up supplier credit? Right. So, so that's some of the things that we discussed in the beginning is that I don't encourage anyone to bid on projects that they don't have credit with vendor credit or supplier credit or a team member that can actually uh, provide the product or service for them. OK, because, again, the government's not going to pay you up front. 
but Eric, don't I need a client with a certification, right? Absolutely not. Listen, you know, it's funny because I've never held a certification in my life. Um, and we've always, if, if, you know, if once you learn how to start going after these contracts and winning them, what you'll find is if you need a certification, there's always someone, there's literally thousands of companies that are certified that get no projects. So there's always someone with a certification that you can pay to use their certification if you needed it. So you don't have to worry about getting any type of certification. Um, but Eric, I, can I just bid jobs at FBO and win them? So the funny thing is, yes, you can bid jobs on FBO. But what happens is um, if you don't know anybody on the other side or they don't know you, um, I've had students of mine who've actually won projects on FBO and they were taken away from them because they were deemed uh, ineligible to actually or unqualified to actually do the work. So again, um, the only people that I've seen that have been able to have any success bidding jobs on FBO, they're doing, they're getting about like one out of every 20 projects they win. And this is someone with like an advanced degree in um, their particular area of specialty. So, you know, you can just bid jobs on FBO, but what you'll find is that you're gonna be spending a lot of time and effort, and it's not gonna give you the type of return that you're looking for for all the time invested. And so what's gonna happen is at the end of the day, when you run the numbers, you're gonna be actually upside down and losing money. Uh, isn't it easier just to bid on Fed bid and submit a number? Again, you know, you can submit on Fed bid and, and, and submit a number. But a lot of times, the types of projects that you're looking at, it's going to be small profit margins or small rentals because why? Fed bid is a driving all the way to cost to the bottom. So the way the Fed bid works is um, they're usually standard items like pens, paper, pencils, you know, things that you can buy commonly. So anyone and everyone can provide them. So how much markup can you really add? How much value can you really add to that? So if you're if you're selling the government, let's say a ten thousand dollar item that any and everyone can get, you may be willing to, you may want to say, okay, a thousand dollar profit is good enough for me. But what if the next guy says $500 profit is good enough for him? So now you're risking a $10,000 item for a $500 markup. How often, you know, how many of those would you have to sell to start making any real money, significant money? So to me, it's not uh, an effective strategy for actually building a real sustainable long-term business. Um, well, Eric, I've got a friend of mine who wins all his contracts at the time he said he, he doesn't need to learn. Again, I have people that I know that win contracts on their own as well. But are they successful? Are they wealthy? Are they actually building a sustainable business? No, they're just getting by, right? So again, I had a friend of mine, he was doing this um, without actually following a formal system, but he was just getting by. And what happens is he realized all the time he was spending, he might as well go out and get a regular job for the amount of money he was making. So again, if you want to make a viable business or a viable career out of it, you need to learn a formal system, a formal process, so that you can go after the contracts that are, you know, that put real money in pocket. Um, well, the government has to buy from us anyways because we're small, we're women, we're veteran, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. That's 100% true. Yes, the government does have to buy from you because you're a small business, woman owned business, veteran owned business, but they don't have to buy from you exactly, right? So they have to buy from a small business, a woman owned business, a veteran owned business. But as you can imagine, there's probably some large companies out there that are women, veteran, and even small. Remember, small is for the government is not small for me and you. Small for the government in, in construction is 36 million a year revenues over five years. That's 150, 160 million dollars over a five year window. That's not small. So again, they do have to buy from uh, small businesses, women-owned business, veteran-owned business, but that doesn't mean necessarily they have to buy from you. So that's why we want to teach you how to get them to start buying from you. Eric, I know once I get my 8A, I'll be straight. I can tell you guys that I literally receive an email every single week from an 8A contractor who's been 8A for one year, two years, three years, who has never gotten a contract. Um, in fact, the last email that I received, let me see if I can pull it up. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull this up. Email. I mean, it was terrible because the guy felt terrible. He said, uh, da, 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 da. where is he at? Hold on. 
I, I'll find it. You know what? I'll find it when we go to the Q and A session. Somebody remind me we get to the Q and A section, and I'll find that email from 8A. But literally, you know, the 8A again, it's a license to fish, so there's no guarantees that you'll actually, um, you know, get any contracts once you get your 8A certification. They don't teach you how to use it. They don't teach you how to get contracts. Um, and so the problem is that they don't have any money or budget for cert for training people how to actually maneuver with the 8A contract. So again. 8A is an excellent program, but like anything else, you've got to learn how to use it and learn how to do it. So listen, that was secret number three, how to get direct rewards without writing proposals or using FedBiz Ops, FedBid, or any other type of bid sites. Um, so listen, just to recap what we talked about, um, you know, let me ask you something. If we were to show you, or if you were, for example, to say use secret number one, to learn how to scale your business using federal contracts like I showed you. And then you found a consultant client in secret number two and apply your GovCon hack in secret number three. Do you think you could be successful? All right. Um, I'm burned out. Give me one second to catch my breath. We've been talking now for about 47 minutes. Um, let me turn on my camera. You guys see me? Do, 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 do. Everybody is still with me out there? You guys still with me? Cool. All right. Um, everyone excited about what we just talked about? I'm sure there's a lot of people probably overwhelmed because we cover so much information. Um, so before we get to the Q&A session, I, I did create a special package for you today. I want to know if it's okay if I share it with you guys um, really quickly. And so what it is is the uh, we're just going to spend about 10 minutes going over this. Um, it's the GovCon Giants program, like we told you in the beginning. Um, so I want to talk about the program, what's included, how does it work, and um, so how you can actually implement the program. Some of the things that we're going to discuss in the GovCon Giants course, how does it go, and we're going to just kind of like touch bases. And then we'll jump into Q&A session, if that's okay with you guys. Um, before we jump into that, let me kind of go over a case study with everyone out here. So Lewis Reed, um, Lewis Reed, I met Lewis, and I say I met Lewis, but Lewis, uh, again, he came and he was a student. Um, he emailed me back in October 2017. My name is Lewis Reed. I recently accepted me your Facebook page. Uh, thank you for adding him to the group. So in the beginning, when I was first getting started, I didn't have the course up and running. And so what I did was I created the free Facebook group to allow people to get into before I launched the course. But the, either way, Lewis came to me. He had just watched the video, Does the Government Buy What I Sell? Um, learn who your customers and competitors are. And so he said, I don't have anything right now to sell. He's like, I own a business. I'm, I'm a clear professional. Um, he works in cybersecurity. Um, he goes, my question is, should I look to sell my services after I gain more experience? Or on the side, should I do like bid like janitorial services? I hope this makes sense. Look forward to you. So again, that's October of 2017. Um, May of 2018, Lewis purchased the course when it first came out. Um, and you know, the funny thing about Lewis, he would always like ping me and email me. So like for my birthday, you can see there, August 20th is my birthday. First of all, happy birthday. Thanks for all you do. Your videos, website, books, classes, Facebook page. Secondly, my business partner and I both interviewed with North Grumman. They're one of the top 100 DOD contractors. To sum it up, they want us to come on board as employees, not as subcontractors. Um, the project manager had no intention of bringing us on the company. I was frustrated, but we can move forward. So I, I always kept Lewis like, and if you guys have ever emailed me before, any of you out there, you know, I mean, I, I'm responding back via email. So I always kept encouraging Lewis, listen, don't worry. The right opportunity is going to come for you. Um, and so, you know, he, he kept on and he's persistent. And, uh, so we did a strategy session call in December of, uh, 2018, November or December. I can't remember. But either way, he said, Eric, I just want to touch. Uh, good evening, Eric. Just want to touch basically really quickly. After the first conversation we had last month, which was last year. So, yeah, December of 2018. He goes, uh, we talked about my business and the future consulting opportunity I may have. Um, I had a meeting with my friend's company. It went well. They're huge. And so just to kind of give you a, a, some history. So what happened was Lewis reached out to a friend of his who worked for a large construction company and approached them about, did they need help with winning contracts? Um, and at the time, his friend said, no, 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 we've got it covered. Well, a few months later, they circled back around to him um, and said, hey, Lewis, are you still doing the government consulting thing? And he said, yeah, I am. 
And so he had a meeting with the vice president. And uh, so he said they agreed to work with him. And so essentially what he says is, hey, I've got a top, I attached a copy of the capability statement so you can see it as well. They wanted my services because I've got government clearance and they want to see what's out there for them and the arena, specifically DC, Maryland, Virginia. And the bottom line is at the end of the day, Lewis ended up connecting with this company who has $40 million per project bonding, $90 million aggregate. So um, they do $100 million a year. And uh, Lewis, the guy who a few just a few months before was thinking about bidding janitorial services and had no sense of direction, is now representing a $100 million firm. Um, so as you guys can imagine, Lewis is also one of my students in my pilot program. We're working with him one-on-one -on -one to help him land. Um, that company, their first contract. So um, case study number two, uh, CC. So CC, um, when she first came to me, she said, I'm an Air Force spouse, mother of two, got a master's degree in industrial organizational psychology. Um, so again, October 2018, she was asking me, Eric, what next coach should I be focusing on? I'm going to be relocating in 2020. Um, and I want to know what should I be doing? Should I be waiting until I move? Do I need my GC license? And as you see there, there's some questions that she asked me. Um, so what are some of the tips on becoming a successful supplier? Do I need a joint venture? Um, should I sell one thing, one niche or multiple things? Um, what kind of max code should I be putting on? How do you structure for my website? So she asked me a lot of the same. Again, these are typical questions that people ask me when they come up YouTube. What about like learning about dibs and Nico? And is there a cheat sheet and websites and things like that? So CC and I, she uh, so she bought the course um, and then we again, we had our, our strategy call and she said, thanks for providing me clarity insight. I got the phone call. All my questions answered. And so what happened was on that call. CC worked for a company that did energy services, so they did fracking. And so uh, I said, listen, CC, if your your company doesn't do government contracts, why not approach your company and become like an employee entrepreneur? Right. So remember the example what Pierce did where he was offered a, a, a company and status of a job plus a percent of the sales. I talked to her about that. She goes, Eric, thank you so much. You're awesome. And so she had a new direction now. And she goes, yes, I've had my call. My goal is to become one of Eric's consulting clients. I met with the CEO today. He said, yes, my proposal. And now he wants me to present to the legal team and get their approval. So um, she said she did a presentation document to the CEO. She presented to him as an employee entrepreneur. He welcomed the idea. He told her to present to the COO. And again, remember, she didn't even know when she first came to me, like what NAX code, what services, what area, the focus on none of this kind of stuff. Um, and then we totally flipped the script on her. And then she said here, January 11th. So we're talking about from October to January. Was that three months? September, October, November, December. Yeah, three months. And so she was good news. The executive team agreed to pursue government contracting. They want to move forward. I'm in the process of registering the company as Sam. I'm acting as both a consultant and company project manager. I gave the seal of my version of your consultant contract and asked for 24 percent of the profits. I'm waiting for a response. Fingers crossed. Make it a great day. And so again, someone who, you know, a few few like a few months ago was talking about bidding dibs and Nico and starting a company and what area to focus on is now representing uh, her company and the government sector. And so last but not least, you know, uh, myself, again, like I told you guys before, I was working with the AC guy, and then I moved on to working with his brother. Um, and then, like I said, I started out, I did my company for a while. I got into trouble working in the private sector. Got the, I worked for Miami-Dade County, parlayed that back into the federal sector, and then I showed you some of these projects here that I was uh, end up doing. And so remember the hospital project that we talked about that I did at the end of the day? When I left Miami-Dade County, I worked on a similar building. From there, they brought me to the hospital project. It was like $4.9 million. So at the end of the day, when I finished that project, um, I literally walked away, and that was the monies that I made, $544,000. And if you look at that green and white lines, um, it, that's basically on the right-hand side, that's the money that I kept each month after I paid my subcontractor. So, uh, and on the right it says 4.7 million was a contract. I paid my subs 4.2 million, and so I was left with 544 thousand dollars. So as you can imagine, that pulled me right back out of the hole and put me on my feet, and got me going back in there. But again, like I said, 
the biggest excuse that I hear from people all the time is, well, Eric, I don't have a product or service to sell. And listen, neither did the Spark, neither did T-Wit, neither did Charles, none of these people here, they didn't have a product to sell either. They jumped in and they became consultants. So as you can see here, uh, the Spark said, hey, just want to tell you, meeting with great only things that hasn't about pursuing large contracts. They want to go after $300,000 contracts first and work their way up. He wanted to know about government lending, perform, frack payments, wasn't sure about it. And so, again, it's the first rodeo, going like that. T. Witt, same thing, landed his first client, wanted to park with him, mentor him. Um, and then he actually told him this. It was funny because he told me he actually sounded like me. So, again, it didn't just work for me. It worked for Sam, Donald, Christian, Tony. So, again, you know, when you uh, join a GovCon Giants course, first thing we're going to do is we're going to teach you the GovCon Hack Masterclass including the consultant module. So if you decide that this is the route you want to take, um, we talk to you about getting started as a consultant. And so again, like I said, right now, I mean, people pay me literally $2,000 a week to teach them the same stuff that I'm teaching you guys in the class. So that's a $3,000 value. Um, when you sign up and you first, you know, when you first try to figure this stuff out, you know, some of the first things that everyone's going to need out there, you're going to need a subcontract, what I call a subcontractor package. Um, so again, standard forms, templates, several technical proposals, you know, these are some of the things that when I first got started estimating jobs, you know, I ran into huge roadblocks because I didn't know how any of this stuff worked. I didn't know how to price jobs efficiently. So I had to learn how to create this all, these bid sheets myself. Um, but for you guys, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to know what forms to submit and how you'll be able to choose the best contractors for the job, complete proposals correctly. And you'll be able to get rid of hiring outside people to help you complete your forms. You won't make some of the most common mistakes that people make. Um, and you won't be, you'll be less likely to submit incorrect or insufficient information. So again, as part of the package, you're going to get all my sample bid templates as well that I use to bid my jobs. So again, like I said, when I first got started, I was trying to figure all this stuff out. Um, and so now for you, that problem is solved. You won't have to worry about that. And what that does is it saves you both time and money. Um, because it literally took me about two years of working through dozens of projects and contractors to obtain all this information. In fact, some of my uh, subcontract agreements come from hundred million dollar corporations. I just literally took and copied their forms. And if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. So, you know, again, you know, some of the naysayers are going to be, well, Eric, can I just use some of my own standard contracts for my subcontractors? You can. But um, I like to say it like this. Uh, if you treat your business like a business, it will pay you like a business. So if you decide you want to use Office Max or Office Depot type forms, um, they're good until you get in trouble or until you need to enforce them. And then at that point, you'll wish you had used a professional form that covered you in, ca in case of all of the unforeseen events that you don't even expect to happen that you never foresaw. Um, well, Eric, aren't there a bunch of free government services out there to help me complete the forms and documents? Absolutely. Listen, there are a ton of free services out there that you guys can use. But um, if you really want to go after this and make it a business and make it a full time gig for you, um, do you really want to entrust your hands and set up an appointment or a schedule to meet with someone to go after a multi million dollar contract? Or would you rather have the information at the tip of your fingers so that you can uh, pull the trigger and make the decision immediately? Um, Eric, well, I thought all the government forms were standard. Yes. A lot of the government forms are standard. There's uh, standard SF forms or standard Air Force forms. There's standard uh, Navy forms. They are all standard, but they're standard within their respective industries or agencies. So again, um, when they say standard, what it means is, yes, uh, they're standard depending upon who you decide to work with. But at the same time, um, you want to make sure that you are aware of what you should be looking for and make sure that you've got everything covered and all the clauses checked and all your, you know, T's crossed, I's dotted. All right. So again, like I said, the GoCon hack masterclass plus consulting modules plus the big templates. Uh, we're talking about a $4,000 value. Like I said, the same information that I'm using for you guys, same form, same documents. Uh, people are putting me on retainer to actually do this stuff for them uh, just because they don't want to do it themselves. And they're, they're, they're literally lazy. And uh, again, I'm OK with that. Uh, as part of the GovCon Giants course, you're also going to receive our How to Build a Customer Database video series. Um, and let me tell you, 
the this is probably one of the most valuable things I think that we've got in there. Um, and it, only because this is where the majority of people get it wrong. So the majority of people have no idea how to determine who's buying their services, how to find the specific agencies and offices that are buying their services. So I built an entire video series just on that. Um, and so the idea behind it is I want you guys to have a roadmap to know where to go when you're starting out. When I started out, listen, I was limited to sending emails to my SBA representative of what opportunities existed. No one told me how to use any type of system to determine the people that were buying my services and who I should be talking to. So I literally, through like experimentation, I reverse engineered the customer database to find customers. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And so after realizing this trick that I learned by accident, literally after years and years of trying, um, this is something that I was able to put together for you guys and I'm giving it to you inside the Government Con Giants course. And so this alone is gonna make it faster and easier for you to identify your customers. Um, how? Because again, you're not gonna have to guess. Like you're gonna know how and what to search. And, it, and at the very end, it includes a step-by-step -step checklist to make sure that you're doing it right. Um, and so that's one of the hardest things that people have when they first get started is, Eric, who's buying my, who should I be talking to? Where are they at? You know, I sell this, I sell that, I sell food, I sell products, I sell ATM machine, da, 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 da. So that, that is going to help you. But again, for some of your, you know, Nancy Nayers out there, you're saying, well, Eric, I've already got my target list put together. I'm willing to bet that you probably did it wrong. Um, it's probably incomplete. It's probably insufficient. Um, and, and I'm only saying this because really, um, if you're looking at, for example, I'll give you a good example, the client that I work with in Rhode Island. So when we're looking at people in our target market list, you would imagine that they're probably right within like, you know, 20 or 30 miles. But the national parks, the, the, the agency who does all the buying for the national parks is out of Colorado. And you're like, wait, I'm doing projects in Boston. But the people give me the contracts in Colorado. One of the army locations that I work with for the New England area is out of Louisville, Kentucky. So again, if your target market list doesn't encompass um, uh, agencies that are outside of your particular geographical range, then 99 out of 99 out of times out of 10, it's probably wrong. Um, well, Eric, I've already called or emailed my office. Fair enough. But again, like I said, you know. What I get from people all the time is the person who I spoke to says they can't help me. And the reason why they said they can't help you is because you're calling the wrong person. Do you realize that the same person who's handling construction doesn't handle IT? The same guy who's handling IT doesn't handle research and development. The same guy who doesn't research and handling doesn't handle shipbuilding or doesn't handle weaponry. So again, if you're not calling this person that's specific to the particular, your business, your product, your service, if you're not calling that specific person, then they're not going to be able to help you and they're not going to know what you're talking about. And you're going to find yourself frustrated and confused as to why um, you're doing what you, or you, you think that you're doing the steps, but you are um, actually not getting the results. And it's because you're calling the wrong, not because you're calling the wrong person per se, like the Austin, you just call the wrong Austin. You're not calling the one that's specific to your needs and that can help you facilitate you getting closer to meeting or doing business with that agency. Um, can a free government agency help me with this? You know, it's funny because again, um, the quality of the information varies depending upon who you get it from. And I would say that if someone is working for a government agency, it's probably because they don't know how to get government contracts. Because if you knew the power of, of how to get these contracts and make money off of it, there's no way that I would see that she'd be working with an actual agency. I would, you'd be out on the other side getting the actual contracts, making the real money, not taking a, a, a easy paycheck. So again, the quality of the people depends. Um, I'd rather buy a paid service to do this for me. Uh, like I said, you know, um, some of my students have come to me and there's some services like Gov Tribe that do market research. The problem that I have is uh, if you can learn how to do it yourself, then you have the ability to check and make sure that you've got all of the data that exists. If you hire someone to do it for you, even at a nominal fee, um, then you have no way of verifying whether or not all the data or information that you're looking for actually exists. So again, um, GovCon Hack Masterclass plus all the consulting modules. 
all the bit templates you're going to need, customer database, video series. Uh, now, you know, we're talking about a $5,000 value here. On top of that, um, when you invest today, we're going to give you also access to all the calls and email scripts. So if you remember um, the client that I just helped recently land his first $5 million in contracts uh, last year, October, September, I actually took and recorded most of the phone calls and I have them in there. So when I was out going online and I was making phone calls to the people, I was recording myself talking. And um, so I have all of that stuff inside the course as well. So you have access to all the phone and email calls and email scripts that I use. So literally, it took me dozens and dozens of calls to get one good one. And so there's numerous times where nothing actually happened, um, where no one actually answered the phone. So it was definitely an intense undertaking for me to put this whole thing together. But at least now I've got something that I can be proud of. And so, again, like I said, with more than two dozen sample phone calls inside the course, you're not going to have to worry about fumbling your words like I did. You'll literally be able to just pick up the phone and sound like an expert. Copy what I say verbatim. You know, um, and then you rep reproduce the same result. So for the emails, just cut and paste. And uh, I don't know how much easier we could possibly make it for you out there. Um, so, but again, you know, some of you are saying to yourself, well, um, I'm just going to email everyone and I don't need phone scripts. Okay. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Sometimes, because they are government officials, right? If you're emailing people without actually calling or talking to anyone, you know what happens? Sometimes they move, they relocate it, they're no longer there. And so you're going to find a lot of unanswered email. But if you combine the power of calling them and then sending an email behind it, you're going to increase your response rate by at least 60, 70 percent because they may not call you back, but they will send an email response knowing that you've, you've tried reaching out to them using two forms of medium. So, again, um, people might say, hey, I'm going to talk on the phone already. That's actually an advantage, um, but it doesn't help you if you don't know who you should be calling or what you should be saying, right? So the point is, when you call the people, what do you what are you going to tell them, right? So the fact that you're going to phone um, is great, but you need to know who you should call, what you should be asking for, what you should be looking for, what you should be saying, and what information you should be requesting. And so just being on the phone is not good enough to actually get you anywhere. So again, once you sign up, you're going to get instant access to my six-week master class, a total value of $3,000. Um, you're going to get the bid templates, customer data, customer database video series, plus all my call and email scripts. And then on top of all that, we're going to give you the forms and agreements. Again, like I told you, you're building a business. Whether you're a contractor or consultant, oftentimes we look over the obvious liability. Uh, none of us keep insurance because we actually want it, but it's for situations where we need it the most. And so that's the same thing that we talked about here. Um, you know, I've got forms for subcontractors. I've got consulting agreements, JV agreements, team agreements, relationships. In fact, um, the joint venture agreement that I have is if you, if you guys are ever considered doing a joint venture, like a SBA, a joint venture, the agreement I have was a, is a $5,000 agreement because when we were doing a joint venture, um, we had to get approved. So we had to use an SBA approved agreement. And so we hired an attorney to do it. And I know for a fact that alone is worth $5,000. So again, this information is stuff I've gathered over like a 10 year period of working with various forms. And I could have probably personally saved many sour relationships had I had some of these agreements in place beginning because right, we would have set clear rules and expectations for how to do business. But fortunately for you, this won't be a problem because we're giving you all the forms that you need to protect your business when embarking on your GovCon journey. Um, so some of, the, some of the things I get people, can I buy the forms from Office Max, Office Depot? We already touched bases with that. You want to put your hands um, at the risk of Office Max or Office Depot. They're not going to be liable for anything that goes on. Um, even if you're not going to become a consultant, um, if you've got a product or service, if you're reselling products or services, you need to make sure that your vendors are providing you um, delivering the material that you requested. Make sure that supplier uh, is delivering the, the fence, the concrete, the camera, whatever you order. You want to make sure it's the right color, size. Make sure it meets all the right requirements. So you got to protect yourself from that, um, even if, if you're selling products. So again, you know, just keeping things in mind, and like we said earlier, 
Treat your business like a business. It will pay you like a business. So again, we're talking about uh, the GovCon Hack Masterclass, plus all the consulting modules, bid templates, customer database, video series, all the call email scripts, forms, and agreements. So now we're talking about it's like $9,000 value easily. Um, and then on top of that, we've got our Facebook group, members only Facebook group, GovCon Giant. Um, and you will literally be in the same room with all the people that we featured in today's presentation. Um, so all the people that you saw in the webinar night, they're going to be in the group. So you're in a room full of deal makers. And to tell you the truth, when I got started, listen, I didn't have this. When I got started on my journey, there were no strong forums. There was no online discussions, none of that kind of stuff. So, you know, the only time I saw people was at conferences and events. And really, that was like for a day or maybe for a few hours. And then you moved on and you never really forged real relationships with them. Um, we've got people in the group right now uh, in our community who have got women owned business certified, hub zone certified, veteran owned certified. Um, we've got people that are bidding projects together. We have one girl who actually, on one of my live Q and A calls, she, uh, she was referred to a consulting client because the other person didn't have time to work with that consulting client. So again, um, we are doing deals. We're trying to expand our network. We're trying to grow our network so that we can leverage the power of the network. Um, some people are responding to bids and they need someone else to respond. So it could be set aside for hub zone or set aside for women owned. So again, remember the rule of two. If you got two companies that respond to a source of sought notice on FBO, then they can set it aside. So if you are in a community where you know someone that's also a woman owned business or a hub zone business or a small business, whatever the case may be, now you guys can get together and say, okay, you send a response and I'm going to send a response. And then hopefully we can get the government to set that aside. And now, you know, you have increased your chance, your odds of actually winning that, that particular project. So again, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you, when you have some questions about maybe, uh, like we've had, you know, before with Sam, a lot of people are beyond that. Now it's more of, Hey, you know, they're doing the women on certification. What, what things should you write here? What forms should fill in the blank? You know, you could talk to people who've already done it before. Um, so again, you know, the naysayers are going to say, well, I could join any free Facebook group, but do you want to be around people who are actually doing this day in and day out who are actively pursuing this marketplace? Like they said, your network is your net worth. You got to be around people that are actually doing it. They're going to lift you up that may be even better than you, but they're going to be encouraging and supportive and they've already been where you're at. So they can kind of help you get to where they're at in the next phase. Um, if you're part of a LinkedIn group, that's great. But again, um, I've been part of LinkedIn groups where people are just soliciting uh, products or services. We don't solicit products or services. No one's trying to sell you anything. Um, all we're trying to do is, again, and, and part of the rules are, you know, can you agree to add value to the group? So everyone is in there trying to give it all. Um, they've got share information. Um, when you people go to meetings and conferences, they bring back the actual the presentations and they post it in the group. Um, so. Now we're talking about a $10,000 value. And so, again, if all this package did was help you win a $100,000 contract, would it be worth $10,000? Now, obviously, I'm not going to charge you $10,000. But again, if I did charge you $10,000 and I was able to help you pull off getting a six-figure consulting gig, would it be worth it to you? You know, and so those are kind of the questions I want to ask you. Today is to consider is if I could show you how to pick up a seven figure consulting client, um, land you six figures in income, would it be worth the $10,000? Um, or what if I could show you how to get a sole source contract without having to go through all the bid stuff online? Then would it be worth it? So you've got two options. Um, I had op two options, option one and option two. Um, the first option I had was I could go as cheap as possible and try and sell you as many things as possible. But the problem with that was if I really couldn't stack any value for you. So I decided to go with the second option, which was obviously requires a slightly higher investment on your side. But in exchange for that, I was able to dedicate more energy, time and resources to help and guarantee your success. Um, and so, you know, what would the end result be worth to you? If I personally had a business that was winning 200 K per year in federal contracts, whether it was yours or as a consultant, would making this investment be worth it? Or what if, for example, if you had a pipeline of consistent orders 
where people were willing to pay you twenty thousand dollars for a similar result from me. Um, you know what? What people tell me all the time is, Eric, it's not a cost; it's an actual investment. And so that's why people are, don't have a problem with actually paying me to do this kind of stuff. So again, you've already seen now where I said it's worth about ten thousand dollars. And even if today, if you were to go on um, GovCon Giants, and a lot of you guys found this webinar from my GovConGiants.com website. Um, if you go on GovCon Giants right now, you can buy the course at nine ninety seven, and that's what I charge to the public. And it, you know what? It's a great deal. But because of tonight's webinar, I'm going to give you guys a very special offer. And so tonight, you can click the button and take advantage of the offer. Uh, I'm going to actually give it to you for $497. Um, because you invested time with me and you've proven on really that you really want to get the results, I'm going to make a special offer for you just for this webinar. Um, and it's basically the cost of $497. Um, so what would it cost you to do if you had to hire someone to do all this stuff? Right? Now... Uh, at the end of the day, you've got two choices. Number one, you could do nothing, which, you know, which if you do nothing with the information you learned over the last hour, you already know what you're going to get. You're going to go back and uh, basically you're going to get the same results you've been getting, which you're going to get nothing. Or you could choose to take a leap of faith, just test it out and see if it will work for you. Remember, as always, um, everything comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you find out it doesn't work for you, it doesn't make sense, you can always cancel and you'll get your money back. No harm, no feelings, no foul. Um, the real question today is, are you willing to take a chance? Do you want change? Is it worth gambling a few dollars to check this out? Even if it does only half of what I've claimed today, it will pay for itself as soon as you land your first client. Um, so again, just to recap, what you're gonna get is the GovCon Hack Masterclass, all the bid templates, customer database video series. Oh, not don't forget the consulting modules, all the call and email scripts that I use to land the first $5 million in contracts for the client last year, um, forms and agreements, and our members only Facebook group, a $10,000 value. And on top of that, if you buy it tonight, um, you're going to get two free template cake statements from the website, templatecakestatements.com. We're going to throw in two free capabilities statements, statements um, and you'll get that immediately once you make the purchase. So, um, with that, we're going to jump into our question and answer session. I'm going to put the offer up on the screen and I'm going to set the timer. So you should see the offer on the screen. Uh, webinar special price, $497. i am going to turn my camera on and we're going to start taking questions from people. All right. Perfect. Okay, guys. So uh, you guys can see me. I'm here. So now I can read the comments. So Sam, okay, good stuff. Now, um, just, just so I know, so you guys know, the four ninety seven price. Just I want to make clear about this. It does not include any strategy sessions. It's just the course only. So um, that is the difference between the people who buy the full price. They get the strategy sessions with me. Um, so if you buy the 497 course, it does not include any strategy sessions. So uh, I just want you guys to know that because uh, that is a distinction between the people who pay the full price is they get the strategy sessions with me. Now, you do have the option to uh, upgrade and to buy a strategy session, but it only includes the course and the course materials. Just just make that clear for everyone. OK, cool. Uh, KD, yes, um, it is accessible for a lifetime. Okay. Oh, KD, listen, if you teach entrepreneurs how to get certified for contracting, um, that's perfect. Um, yeah, KD, if, you, if you're already doing this, then it's perfect for you. Shackman, go fishing. <laughs> um, Katie, the link is already in there.
Questions, questions, questions. No questions? You guys can't tell me I did that good. Somebody's got to have some questions. Questions. I can't believe we got no questions. Okay, so Shaquan says, what made you want to start helping people? Um, actually, Shaquan, one of the things was, you know, when I actually, when I was working out here, um, part of the story I didn't tell was, so I started doing government contracts, and then I grew my company. I had 23 employees, and, you know, we started, I thought, started getting really cocky, and then, you um, I literally started doing private sector contracts. And so some companies that took advantage of me and they and they sued me, um, I want to get them back, really. Uh, and so for me, I said that what I was going to do was instead of me trying to grow a business really big, I figured if I train enough people, right, then we could um, – change the landscape of contracting. If I helped enough people build their companies up, then now we would have more control than some of the large firms out there. And so the goal was to help build enough companies uh, up. And so my thing is I want to help 200 companies get to 5 million in revenue. And with that, I think that we can start controlling our own destiny and our own fate in this marketplace. Um, and so I just found it, it was easier for me to train like an army of contractors and I thought that'd be more valuable than just building up, um, you know, my only company, because, again, that would be just helping me and not helping the rest of everybody. So I, it's a way to pay back the people who did me wrong um, and helping them. The other reason is when I first got started a long time ago, um, a friend of mine um, who was doing the guy, remember the painting guy that I showed you guys in a video? Well, one of his friends who used to work on school board projects, when the real estate market crashed, the guy was a, he was, a, he did concrete for a living. He actually committed suicide because he lost his house. He lost all of his money. He lost all of his wealth and he committed suicide. And, um, he was a good contractor, but because the market crashed and all the state and local contracts went away, he didn't have any business and he lost everything. Meanwhile, we were making money hand over fist on the federal arena. So we weren't special, right? But we were just in a different marketplace. And so that's kind of, you know, what happened was that this, when this guy committed suicide, I realized, man, you know, if he had only knew about government contracts, he could have switched over and moved into a different marketplace. And uh, it would, it, you know, he'd be alive today. This link has a counter. Can I actually when I get home? Yeah, you can actually when I get home. <laughs> Jay says it's great. Well, but I have a question for me. I asked Maria two hundred questions a.m. Yeah. By the way, guys, let me um, let me put you guys Maria's email in there. Maria is my assistant. If you guys need anything, you guys can shoot Maria an email. I mean, you can shoot me an email, but you know, Maria is very good at getting back to people. Um, yeah, no, Shaq, and listen, I'm going to tell you, uh, listen, I can tell you this today. Um, remember Justin Adams and the group? I literally connected him with a company that's an 8A firm that does 8 million in businesses. I connected them today um, to, so he can help this client out because I didn't have time to help this client. Um, but Justin Adams, because I trust him and I've seen what he can produce, I was able to give him a client, a consulting client today, just because, you know, um, I know him and I know what he has the ability to produce. So again, you know, if you, listen, if you, if you got, if you're serious about this and something that you want to do, I mean, I, I'm going to, I'm going to help you make it work. Right. So I'm going to be there with you. I, listen, even without, um, even without the strategy session, 
we still going to do live Q&A sessions and people ask questions. Um, so I'm going to be there. I'll be active in the Facebook group. You can send me emails. Listen, you could call. Maria will call you and talk to you. So, again, if I see people putting in the effort, putting in the work, I'm going to stand behind them. So I don't have a problem with that. I'm standing right behind you guys. So. Uh, Dave, yes, there is a recording for the webinar. You'll get the recording in a couple hours. Shaq, I've been doing work, doing the videos and doing legwork. Good. Listen, uh, this stuff is real. I mean, uh, this stuff, this stuff is real. I, 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 um, I was up, uh, I know, I know. Jay Poor at 10x. Yeah, Jay, you've been aggressive. So, yeah, Shaqlin. Um, no, I know. I and you know, people ask the questions that come on YouTube, and and I know it's. Uh, I send the majority of the emails that I send to people. I've already answered the questions in a video somewhere. So Maria literally just sends the email and sends them a link back with the video, so they can do it. So. Yeah. What else? What else you guys got? Dang. So Jay, you hit Marie up this morning. That's cool. Look, um, probably around April, May, I'm gonna pick up another four or five million dollars in Soul Source. <laughs> Shaka says you're very respectful. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, again, I I can I'm respectful because you guys are new. But once you guys get in the group, like I got some people that's taking my course and they start asking some dumb questions, trust me, I get on the ASS. I uh, I'm respectful now because all you guys are new, so I can kind of like, you know, not hold you guys responsible. But if you get in, if you start taking the course, and then you ask me questions that I know are in the course, then I'm a, then I'm not going to be so nice. Because I'm going to be like, look, I'm like it's the, the question is answered in there. Ask me something that, that I did not ask or, or ask me something that I have not addressed, so then that way I can, you know, take care of it. But, you know, people, so I'm nice tonight, Shacklin, but don't worry. You get in my group and you start taking a course and you start asking some BS questions, I'm going to jump all over you too. <laughs> Once I complete the course myself, is there an affiliate program to resell? Um, KD, that's a very interesting question. I have not set up an affiliate program, but we could talk about it. Elizabeth, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Jay Porter, yes, sir. Oh, Bridget Lewis, you're on day 16. Okay, keep going. Oh, Zach, you changed your soul corp to LLC. Good move. Good move. Katie, I'd be happy to get a $100,000 contract. $100,000? to you. Katie said, I'm starving out here. <laughs> I'm with you. Elizabeth, I'm trying to get at least a million dollar contract. That's not hard either. I need payment options on that special. Yeah, I have payment options. It's called $99 a month. It's on my GovCon Giants program. $99 a month for 12 months. That's the payment options I have. Listen, I'm already giving you a break. I can't, I can't do everything. Look. Listen. Y'all went out and y'all spent y'all Valentine's Day money. Now y'all coming to me trying to have me give y'all a discount. Take go back and get that dinner money back that y'all spent. Take back that dinner that y'all ate on Valentine's Day. Tell them you should have bought they should have bought you an investment in yourself and your business. Oh, I, I listen, Katie, thank you. Oh, I know it's a great price. Listen, I I actually question myself every time I do this. <laughs> Jay's laughing. 
That's true. No, listen. Uh, everybody go out. They buy. They, they go out and buy all the stuff they want to buy with their money, and then they come to me and they want me to give them something for free. You know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. I I I am trying. You know, I want to help you guys out. But remember this: if you're not willing to make a commitment in yourself, what? How how do you, if if you paid a hundred bucks for it, right? How far are you really gonna get? You're not gonna do it. I can tell you this. I first when I first launched, and it wasn't the same course that it is today. But when I first launched my course, and it was free, I can I'm gonna show you guys. I'm you know I'm gonna show I'm gonna put I'm gonna go back and find those statistics. Like when it was free, no one did it. No one did the course. I, what did I just tell you guys? Listen, I make so even um, if you're talking about Jay. Listen, I don't mind helping anybody who. Ooh, Shacklin. Now you talk. That you know what? That got me excited. You quote Jim Rohn. That's that. You are right, me. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. No, but Jay, seriously, I don't mind working with you guys. Listen, right now I've got two groups, right? Uh, I've got two groups of people that I'm working with uh, for to become certified uh, personal trainers. So I want other people to become trainers and consultants like myself. So I'm putting them through my own program, and I work with them. Like I said, I've got Tuesday calls at 7:30 and Wednesday calls at 7 o'clock. Um, I still, I had originally there was five people in the slot, um, but there's only four people at now. So I've got room for one more person. So again, you know, I, I, I can use one more person in the slot. Um, and again, I look, trust me, I don't have to do this. I, I do it because I enjoy it. This is fun to me. I want to see you guys succeed. I love I love your stories, um, uh, you know, Katie. You're already in lane, so you're interested. Yo, Katie, I think that you and I may have some further discussions about, you know, going further because you, you know, like you said, you're already working with people already, so you may be able to leverage this even more so than a regular chat. Yeah, Mr. Ron is that's my guy. Uh, that was I like that. Whenever and listen, as you know, I knew the quote when you said it. I knew where it came from. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. But yeah, Katie, I can see already some synergies between what you're doing and what I'm doing. Um, and by the way, listen, I'm I'm part again. I'm I'm open to talking to anyone about opportunities that are available. Matter of fact, um, for the people that are still on here, listen, I can, I'm going to tell you guys that this, it's not even. I haven't even shared this yet anywhere. Right now. I'm working on creating um, a, an actual technology hub it's where we're taking and licensing technologies um, and getting them over to the Department of Defense. So I'm going to be creating, and you might have heard of it, it's called DOIUX. Um, they're taking like new technologies um, uh, that are and actually creating, licensing them so that we can get them over to the Department of Defense to help with our Warcraft efforts. I'm actually going to be working with some people and helping to facilitate. Uh, a, a, I, I'm not sure if it's going to be private equity or VC, but we're going to put together a fund just to work with people who have new technologies that they want to introduce to the Department of Defense. So, again, if any of you guys out there are working on any new cool technologies that you want to get funded or you want to take to the DOD, that's something I'm going to be – I'm working on now, and I'll be launching probably in the next three to six months. And I've already got a three-star general on my board of advisors. So, listen, all of you guys on today, you're still in the front. You're still, in, you're, I mean, they're in the beginning stages. We're, we're in the infancy of this. This course has not been out for a full year yet. I'm still only like, uh, like eight months into this thing. And really, I'm only like four months into it where, you know, I think it's, it's decent enough that it has real substantial value for people. So, again, listen, you know, Get in now, get in on the front end before I decide to abandon the whole thing. Because if this other technology thing takes off, 
I don't know if I have time to really spend working with you guys. So let me let me try and work with all the people I can um, and help as many people as I can before, you know, I decide to go another direction. Um, so, but again, it's going to still be up. I'm going to still be here for you um, in those ways. <laughs> Shaka said, I took a picture of your books and one of your videos. I bought all the good content books in your office. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, KD, listen, go ahead and enroll, and then um, you'll see emails and stuff coming from me. You'll see emails coming from Maria. Uh, you'll see us there. So we're, you know, what, you know, in the Facebook group, send me a message. Uh, if you have Facebook, if not, that's fine. Listen, I get messages on Instagram. People send messages on LinkedIn. People send me direct messages on Facebook. I get emails. I get YouTube messages. So, Katie, listen, there's again, I know Jay Porter from, um, oh, Jay said, show us the 8A email. Okay, cool. Jay, let me see. Let me get that 8A email real quick. Hold on. Do, 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 do. All right, Jay, let me see. I'm going to, what I'm going to do, Jay, because I don't know how to sh screen share. Let me see if I can turn on screen share. Jay got me trying some new stuff I ain't never did before. Let me try it. Okay. Is it big enough? Can you read it, Jay? I'm going to copy it. No? Okay, hold on. All right, hold on. Let me do this. I'm going to copy and just paste it without the person's name in it. How about that? There you go. I'll just copy and paste it. You can read it right there. There you go. That was uh, that was February fifteenth. No, listen, this is all the time, man. People think, and again, eight A is an excellent program, but if you don't know how to do it, then um, you know it's no good. If you don't know how to do it. What we got? What we got? What we got? Hold on. Where's my CJ? You messed me up. Okay, cool. All right, listen. What else we got? What else? What else? Anything else? My eyes look red on the screen. Interesting. Sam, sounds good. Sam, listen, don't forget to send me a, set up a strategy session when you get a chance, buddy. What else? What else? What else? Anything else? Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> Great. See you inside, David. Anybody else? Done. Jay's done. Okay, cool. Go back and read the playbook. Good. <laughs> Shacklin, no problem. Whatever it, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes.
I mean, I, listen, I'm going to be here to support you guys. So, like I said. All right. Anybody else? Anything else? Looks like everybody's, man, looks like everyone's questions are answered. Can I sign off? Is that what you guys telling me? Can I go? I got 17 million minutes on the board, but, you know. No one has any questions. Katie's out. Sam's out. David's out. Jay's out. Elizabeth's out. Yes, it is recorded, David. It's recorded, and you'll get um, you'll get the replay. It's recorded. All right. So let me do this before you guys run off. Let me. Looks like everybody's out. Everybody's leaving. All right. All right. Listen. Have a good night. No questions. Good. Okay, Bridget, no problem. You know, keep. All right. I'm glad I answered your questions. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. No, listen, if I answered you guys' questions, uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you inside, of course. We'll see you inside the Facebook group. As always, if you got anything, email Maria, email me. You guys know how to reach me. Hit me up, DM me, whatever you got. Um, I'm I'm there. If you don't get a response, hit me back. You know, maybe the message didn't go through, but I, you know, I normally respond in a few days to everyone. So, all right. Richard Cobb still here. Richard, ask me a question, buddy. What do you got for me? I'm here with you, Richard. What do you have? Ask me a question. Ask me a hard, ask me something really hard. Or ask me something really silly. God bless and my whole, my hollow. Tell me again. Take care. Bye. Have a good night. All right. I guess um, that's it. With that said, um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and sign off as well. Hey, look. Thank you guys for coming out, and um, I'll see you guys next time. By the way, you'll get a replay of this, a full replay for everybody who missed the webinar tonight. Thanks so much.